Hey, welcome to Rust Revival Garage. My name is Tim. Uh, in the last video, I got the engine put back in my 1968 Pontiac Le Mans, but now it's time to install all the little accessories. I've got to get the carb back on. I've got to get the distributor in. I need to do the uh, alternator, power steering, get those brackets set up, belts, all that kind of stuff. So there's lots to do. If you've got a Pontiac and you're wondering where all these things go, follow along with me as I figure out how to get it all back together. Uh, so lots to do. Let's get to it. Decided to give the uh, intake and one of the brackets a little love before putting it back on because the engine looks a little nicer and this was kind of crappy. Okay, she's looking party. I can live with that. Yep, need to get the intake on and take it from there. The first thing I always want to do is put my PCV down in there. Um, it does make it a little harder to line everything up when you're dropping down the intake, but this thing is a pain in the butt to get through that rubber gasket when the intake is on there. I learned that the last time. Okay, I got it down in there. Had to use a little bit of grease even. Um, but yeah, when you bring your intake down, you feed this hose up through this hole and then drop it down. Again, it's, it's going to make it slightly harder to get it, but you've st this is long enough that you can get it up in, bring it down. Okay, I'm going to reuse my Felpro gaskets. Uh, they look a little dirty, certainly, but they are still in good shape. Nothing is really crushed beyond repair, and they're going to be okay. The only thing I noticed was that the water jacket, I actually called Felpro because they said do not you do not need to use any kind of... Uh, uh, gasket maker around the water jacket but if you can kind of see it really did leak all the way out to here um, so I am going to use a little bit of gasket maker uh, around here around here and then again on the intake just around just around the these sides here just to give it a little bit of extra protection because that just didn't seem to cut it on its own. Just, just the gasket. Just a very light coat. Oh, this is not going well. It is just not lining up. I use this to sort of pull it in, but it's too far back. And I have no idea why. I got this side started, two of the bolts over here, but these are just not lining up and I'm not gonna force it into an aluminum intake. Ah, back to the drawing board. I got it in. Um, it 
this is fitting a little tighter now the holes are lining up I've got bolts I've got a bolt here bolt back there and now I'm going to use this to pull it in a little bit more and then I can tighten all the rest of the bolts down um, and I do did make sure I've got any C's on this because this is aluminum you do not want to get that caught in there so I'll go ahead and pull this in use this to pull this in this one you only need to torque down to 12 foot-pounds it does not require a lot but because it is 12 I'm gonna actually do it with the torque wrench because I don't want to go above and beyond accidentally with the Edelbrock there is a torque sequence you want to go one two three four so inside out then after four you come over and do five and six you do seven and eight then you do the back one nine and then ten so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and they do get torqued down to 25 foot pounds I know uh, Pontiac intakes and heads are much more than that but because this is aluminum metal brock suggests 25 foot pounds and of course I forgot to put this in first but this goes here so I want to get that on before I torque it all down Okay, so the next thing I want to do while I've got room behind the engine is put my block to firewall ground on. This is actually a little more important than some people might think, but having that ground actually does help with a lot of the electronics in the dash. Uh, you, I've got my ground going from the battery to the block, and then you've got this ground going from the block to the firewall. And so I'm going to go ahead and put this one back. Actually, I might use... I'll use this one. I'm going to clean it up a bit. My problem is, is that I painted the firewall, so I need to sand that up a little bit. I hate to sand this paint. I think I'm going to have to touch that up after I'm done. Good as new. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is a hole in the head right there, and I can just put this bolt through the ground, and I'm grounded to the head, but I do need to sand that off a little bit too. You just need to tighten that down and now I've got a good solid ground to firewall or ground from block to firewall I also need to put the vacuum line that goes back to the modulator on the transmission back in so I gave it a little silver spritz so that the part that does stick up oops the part that does stick up into the engine bay looks pretty good also now is as good a time as any to get my filter in uh, I got a Wix and for the Le Mans 68 it's a 51258 I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with oil get a little oil on this rubber seal put it up in there and don't have to worry about that being done then I'll need to make sure I've got oil in the rest of the engine okay the oil filter is on uh, one more thing to check off the list, and uh, yeah, good to go. 
All right, got this looking a little better. Got to run this down. And here. And I thought that this was attached to something, but I'm guessing not. There is a little bracket holder here, but it doesn't really go in that direction. Oh well, I think what I'll do is just attach it down there at the uh, transmodulator and hopefully that'll hold it up in place because the vacuum line's got to go from here over to the carb. All right, took a little bit of work but I've got it there. It's a little too close to the spark plug wire uh, holder for me but I should be able to bend, maybe bend it a little bit but it's pretty much where it was before. As you can see I've got it lined up so that we are on zero so hopefully it's at top dead center and time to put the distributor in. Now with Pontiacs the distributor goes with the vacuum advance on the right toward the driver's side and I'm actually going to put it in this direction. Uh, it's, too, it's more common this way, but it also gives me a little bit more wiggle room. Um, once you've got the distributor in and you're back there, you're at the valve cover and the firewall real quick. So there's just not as much room. So I'm going to put it in this direction and check and see where we are, uh, where my rotor is when I drop it in. And then that is going to be number one. Okay, so I've got my gasket on here. And I'm actually going to put a little bit of assembly lube on there just to make sure it's nice and lubricated. There we go. So I've got it seated, and this means I've got a lot more room to go back and forth. This would be where my number one is going to be. And so when I put the cap on, what I can do is one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two, all the way around, and it's at top dead center. I just checked, took the spark plug out. The piston is all the way at the top. Like I said, my mark is at zero. And so this will be my number one. Perfect. And then now I just need to get the hold down plate in there. And I will tighten that up and I won't make it super tight because of course I'm gonna have to move it around but at least it's on here now and distributor is gonna be good to go it's time to get the carb on all right just got to get the studs down in there and then we can drop the carb spacer on Gaskets are still in pretty good shape. There we go.
Just gotta tighten these down. And my carb is set. Okay, hopefully you can see it, but my PCV goes right in there. The transmission vacuum line goes on there. Probably tuck that behind the fuel line. And this would be my vacuum advance. This is kind of short. I don't know why. What's going on here? But I do need to run my vacuum advance line from here to there. And do not have a brake power booster to run, so I do not have that to worry about. And let's see, the only other vacuum line... Ah, I need to hook this up as well. Ah, now I remember. The vacuum advance on the Pon X goes to this, so I'll actually be running one line into here. The other line will run all the way back to the vacuum advance on the distributor. And this is my other vacuum line that's going to go in here. And... onto my distributor. Took a little fighting, but I got the uh, vacuum on the vacuum advance, but I've got enough slack so that if I do have to turn it, I'm good to go and I've got the wires or the hoses sort of up here out of the way and I think we are good on our vacuum lines. So if you're doing this yourself and you do have power brakes this is where you would hook up a vacuum line if good to go from here over to your booster. I don't have that so I just kind of wanted to show that just in case you weren't sure. Now if you didn't know I'm in the middle of rewiring the entire car so one of the things that I would do right now is plug in for the electric choke, plug in the distributor, all of that. But I haven't gotten to that point yet, but I do have uh, everything ready to go for when I do have the wiring finished. Next up is my throttle cable. Biggest problem I've always had is Pontiacs had the kickdown for their transmissions on a switch at the pedal. So the stock uh, throttle cable bracket does not help with this. So if anybody has some suggestions on what to do with the kickdown cable, let me know because there's nothing out there. Every single product that you see for the throttle cable and the kickdown cable has two bolts that attach to the back, even if it's for Pontiac it says. It attaches to the back of the intake manifold. The problem is Pontiacs only have one bolt. So there's no room back there for, you know, any kind of bracket that attaches to the manifold. Um, I haven't seen any brackets that attach to a Holley 750. I did pick up this cheap little contraption that allows adjustable whatever, but it doesn't attach to anything. So, I, you know, it, that does me no good. So if you've got any suggestions, like I said, leave them in the comments down below because there are no practical things I mean other than than manufacturing you know fabricating something there's nothing out there that I know of that can help you attach your throttle cable to a 68 Pontiac and also uh, the kickdown cable um, you know it just doesn't exist I've done hundreds of searches and it, there's just I've looked through forums and people on forums have no idea what to do they they include pictures and stuff but it's never the right setup for a 68 for a throttle cable and a kickdown cable that will work on a holly car. Ah, what a pain. So I guess I'm just gonna have to go without the throttle, or without the kickdown cable, but let's get the throttle bracket on. So this bolt's a 7 16 but as you can see, the original bracket doesn't work with this uh, intake manifold. So I kind of have to only do it with just the one bolt, get it pretty tight, and that holds 
this in place so that I can attach it to this. There we go. And then I just need to attach this right there. And finally, the return spring. Okay. We are good to go. Okay, last big project to button up this engine is all the front accessories. I'm not going to install the radiator cooling system because I still need for the wiring purposes to be able to maybe stand inside the engine bay and you know be able to work around the engine and do all of that. So uh, the cooling system will pretty much be last. But I, like I said, I just want to button up the front accessories. I know with Pontiacs, a lot of people have questions about where you know, how does the power steering pump go on? How does the alternator go on? Brackets and all of that sort of stuff. So I kind of wanted to cover that as much in as, in, as, in as much detail as possible. So let's get to it. Okay, so I think I'm going to start with the power steering. I did not disconnect this. I just took it out, set it aside. Hopefully the cables are still, or the hoses are still okay. Um, and I was smart enough and my own way to keep everything together. Um, at least I mean all the bolts and nuts. So the alternator brackets will go here and here. And so it means I need to take this bolt back out of the water pump. Should be okay. Hopefully I don't break any seals. The I think it's the long bolt that goes all the way through, holds the alternator up, and then the power steering has one, two, three bolts. The long bolt that, bolt that also goes through and holds the alternator up, another bolt down here, then there's one back here that is for the adjustment, that's on the back of the, the pump. This is fun. How do I get the bolt out? I guess I don't. And this goes down here like that. Then is this the bolts? I believe this is the bolt then for the alternator. And then that stud is back through here. What did I do with my long bolt for the alternator? Yeah, that one's starting to feed in. All right. And then this goes on the back. Oh, that's going to be a shorter one. I bet this is my long bolt. Yep. So this one will go in here. And the long bolt. Oops, I need to put that on here. Yep. And this will go through the alternator right there. So what I can do is tighten down these three. This fourth one I'll leave until I've got it all off and I've got, I'm ready to 
put the alternator back on. You know what I'd really appreciate? If you take a moment and subscribe to the channel. I'm doing lots of stuff on this Pontiac, the rewiring. I gotta get this thing started back up for the first time. Doing a lot of stuff on my C10 pickup. Um, yeah, lots of projects upcoming. So if you could subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, realize that I probably should have cleaned that up when I cleaned and painted the engine bay. So I went ahead and cleaned and gave it a quick coat. Might give it another coat or two, but I was getting way too dirty just trying to put the bolts in. So yeah, make it look a little better, hopefully. Okay, well, I'm waiting for that to dry. I might as well get my brackets set up. This one I just have loose on here. It is a 9 sixteenths, I believe. This one is half inch. Don't want to tighten this down until I know for sure where it's got to go. They are a little bit separated, don't worry, try not to worry about that. They do pinch together fairly well and then you can tighten everything down. Okay, I got these torqued down and as you can see, they pinch together just fine. Um, the torque spec for this is only 10 foot-pounds. Um, that one is 20, but this one is 10 and may have overdone it a little bit, but it did really tighten it up against there and this, this one pulled in nice and lined up just perfectly. All right, I'd say that looks a lot better. Hopefully the paint stays on there. I got it pretty well degreased, but I did not really have any way to sand it easily or quickly. So hopefully it sticks around. One of the other things I needed to do was get the valve covers bolted down. So those are all taken care of. Those are 35 years old. These things are pitted, a little bit rusty, but and I'm not keeping them. But for now, they'll work. Okay, the torque on these bolts is actually only 20. I know fairly big of bolts, they're all 9 16 I'm pretty sure. Not gonna tighten them again because I've got to get the belts on and make sure the belts are tight. But I do wanna get them kind of snug for now. You would think you'd only need to loosen up one to get the belts on and correct, but you actually have to loosen all of them up in order to get the belt secure. The other thing you want to do is make sure that they line up. But you don't want to have even a quarter of an inch off. You want a nice smooth straight transition for the belts to run on. I was not liking how that was gonna line up. I started to see that this was pulling the power steering a little farther in back here as I was tightening this one. So I dropped a, another washer in between. There might have been one and I misplaced it. I don't know, but I think it's gonna have a better fit and be a lot straighter because it was starting to turn this way as it was pulling in. I just wanted to make sure that there's a nice straight shot down to that pulley with the belt. And I think that washer is going to help. So take a look at it if you're doing this. Make sure it lines up because if it starts to bend in like, like it was, you're not going to have a good angle for that belt. It's not going to stay on or it's going to wear the belt too fast. And I realized the water pump had started rusting. So 
so I went ahead and gave it a quick coat of Pontiac Metallic Blue, which looks so darn good, doesn't it? Gotta kind of lift the weight off of it to make sure it starts screwing in without dragging. And then it's a matter of lining up the hole, which is hard to do. I can't see. Still adjust. Let's get our belts. Okay, here's the fun thing about your belts. Uh, I don't have air conditioning. I only have the alternator and the power steering to connect to. So I just have the two belts. You might have more than that. But the fun thing is, is that they are, in appearance, almost the exact same size, right? Uh, I will say that the one for the alternator is just slightly smaller. I did have it marked Alt and PS uh, because it is really hard to tell. Until they're actually on the vehicle and you've got them all stretched out. Uh, I had them reversed the last time. I When I first started this for the first time in 23 years, I had them reversed and I could not get the alternator far enough away to, to put it on and get it, you know, get good tension on it. So even though it appears like they're the exact same size, the alternator one is just a little bit shorter. And that one looks too big. Ah, it's got to go around the pulley. We've got the other pulley. There we go, just got to line up the holes. Uh, the hardest part is getting, you really can't put the fan on until the bolts are already on there. Alright, so I sort of have to set all the bolts into the spacer. And then I've got room and I can drop it down in and get the bolts started. I'm not exactly sure I'm going to stick with this spacer. Um, if I remember right, it sticks, it sticks a little too far into the shroud. And you want to make sure with your fan that half of the blades are outside of the shroud, the other half are inside, so that you get max cooling. And this one, I think, gets it in way too far. All right, so the bolts are on. I'm going to tighten those up a little bit more, but the fan is on. So I've got my fuel line run down, and there I will hook that up to the pump and reattach the line. One thing I do want to do, I think, is put a filter here. I won't do that because I don't have it right now, but I want to put a filter up here the way I had it before was before the pump. And I'm not a big fan of that, but at the time I set it up, I just said I'll put it here because then I can still see that it's filling up and the pump's working and all that. But yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of having the filter before the fuel pump. Okay, that's nice and tight. Power steering is a little more tricky, like I said. Gotta tighten this bolt, 
get this one tightened up and then tighten up this one once I lift it up uh, I can get that tightened and we should have good and we should have good tension on that belt so one of the tricks for me is tighten them up just a little bit don't go crazy tightening them up just enough so that when you hold it up it stays and as you can see it's not dropping back down now and then I still don't have a good enough tightness on here but just continue to move it tighten move it tighten and then we should be good to go maintaining the tightness and there we go still need to tighten this one bolt down here um, and then we are done but yeah look nice and tight nice and tight Okay, I've got my heater hose hooked up. Uh, if you don't know, in Pontiacs, they've got a hose that can go to your heater core and then another hose that runs to the head. There's a little nipple back here. Um, one of the things that I do, because I'm pretty much not gonna be driving this car in the winter where I would need heat. A lot of people do this. They will run their heater hose just directly from the water pump to the head and that uh, kind of just cuts out a step because again I'm not really worried about running heat in this car so I've got my heater hose hooked up directly to that head and that's good to go the only other thing that I really need to do is drop the radiator in upper radiator hose lower radiator hose transmission lines and that's it at least for the cooling system um, but again, I'm not going to go too crazy with the cooling system yet. I haven't hooked up the um, distributor cap or the wires. Again, still working on rewiring. And for me, I needed to sort of get all of these things in place so that I can run the wires to the distributor, down to the starter, and to the alternator. So just getting that exact placement is what I needed right now. Once I finish the wiring, then I can go ahead and uh, set up the rest of the car and see if I can get it started again for the first time since last year. Another thing I didn't show was my starter, of course. Um, again, I just need to run my wires down so that I'll be able to hook everything up to the starter. Um, so I don't want to put that back up in there, but it's pretty simple um yours came with shims and you're using the same starter use those same shims do not forget about it but it's just two bolts back up in the body and my pontiac has a bracket somewhere anyway um but yeah that's the only other thing i didn't really show in, in just assembling everything is the starter but again i'm still working on the rewiring and this is required to be down for me to, to hook everything up correctly. Okay, so that's gonna do it. Um, got all of the accessories that I wanted to get on in order for me to continue with uh, my rewiring project. Um, start charge system is next on rewiring and then I've gotta go inside and do the scary part all behind the dash. So yeah, subscribe if you can, follow along with me. After that, I'll be jumping back on the cooling system, get everything tightened up, get the oil back in, and I need to get new wheels and tires. And so, yeah, lots coming up. I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe, comment if I got anything wrong or if you have any questions, and like it if you got anything out of it. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we will catch you next time.